Hello, and welcome back to a new series where I shall be playing as the Imperial Clan Saga in an attempt to restore the Emperor to his rightful place as de facto ruler of all of Japan. I shall be playing a domination campaign once I'm able to select it, and uh, the game difficulty should be very hard. Legendary, simply because of the way I play the game, I do not want manual saves to be disabled, so I shall not be playing on that. And battle realism mode is for people braver than I am. And I'm not gonna have drop in battles. Advisor help of course is off. She CPU moves kind of annoy me sometimes. And the battle time limit I always play with it off. And the saga in my opinion are one of the better clans to start off as. Simply because the way I play in this game, I always want to rush for the line infantry and artillery. And because I get the plus 5 accuracy to all artillery pieces, and I also get the industry, because a lot of industrial buildings give you a lot of money in this game, so it's going to be wonderful. The other two benefits, I'm not a big naval combat sort of user, so it's alright. And money is always good, no matter who it comes from. So let's begin. Now... I shall let you guys watch the intro, so I shall be quiet for that. Of course, once it begins, until then I can continue yabbering and talking all I want. Hmm, very nice looking picture of a lake surrounded by mountains, a couple of trees. And a guy on a boat. After the Sengoku Jidai, peace reigned for 200 years. In Kyoto, the Emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa shogunate. For two centuries, they ruled with absolute authority. Japan prospered. The people were content. In 1853, American warships changed everything. The shogun abandoned his people and signed the Treaty of Peace and Amity. The gates to Japan were open. Trade was established, but the agreements favor the Western powers. The economy faltered, and the people suffered. In 1863, the emperor overruled the shogun. An imperial decree ordered the expulsion of all Western powers. No longer would Japan be westernized. The time had come to strike back. Western powers gave the answer. Prepare to run out the guns. On my command, fire! The treacherous Westerners brought death to our people. The Shogun no longer commanded respect or loyalty. Imperial rule had to be restored. 
to strengthen our position. The Emperor made peace with the British. We will study their ways and discover their secrets. Only then can we destroy the Shogun and return Ona to Japan. The Emperor must be victorious. Saga Domain. Our clan. Nope. Nope. So after an intro like that, we kind of see the situation we're in. We start off in the far southwestern part of Japan. And our goal is to work our way north, taking out the Shogun's loyalist clans as we go, and either converting them or just taking their land from them. And that's what we shall do. So our first mission is basically just research attack, and we get a bit of wealth for trial turns. So let's go, and we're going to go for probably just arm steals. I don't like using the traditional units in this mod, they just feel too similar to the way they were in Shogun 2. I prefer the uh, western style units much more. So I'm just going to put him back in port, no use for him right now. I'm going to just take a diplomatic look at who's around me and what, who they're allied with. So we got a military alliance of the Harado to our north. Are they... Yeah, they're pro Emperor, so that's good. So I guess our first target, just simply because it was the first one I clicked on, is going to be this island of Fuku to the west. They're allied with the Shogunate, and it might... Well, it's not going to turn out well for them because of that. Yeah, I'm just going to get, whoop, just going to get rid of this. Stronghold, just need to level it up soon. I'm not going to pay too much for the upgrade of the town just yet. Hmm, this... Hmm, I guess no downside to having criminals run rampant in my province. And farms are always good. The trade in port... Oh, I require an event to happen, for the most part, in order to upgrade it. Huh. Hmm. Different benefits provided by different factions. It's nice. So we got all that. Like the start in faction sort of bonuses. Then we got clan development one. So it gives it buffs our traditional units, even though I'm probably not going to be using them at all. And we're, we're already trading with all the big major Western powers. So who is this we're already at war with? We're at war with two islands. Hmm. No, one island. But I plan to be at war of two islands. So let's just see how that goes. Got a foreign veteran. Pretty much a spy or a rake, as you would see in Empire Total War and Napoleon. Except it also has a couple of the benefits of a veteran from the more recent games, like Rome, where you can train troops. Or give them experience, I guess, in the proper way. So, got some parrot guns. That's actually really good to start off with those, so I'm probably going to disband. I need to get used to these controls again. I'm going to disband these units and send him back to the As capital. The current army here, just going to disband him. I'm going to leave myself kind of unprotected for a little bit, just until I get the uh, line infantry. And then I'm going to start building up everything and sending them out to war. I really want that province, but not yet. Hmm... Let's take a look at finance. As long as we have over a thousand income next turn, I'm fine with whatever tax rate. Yeah. And let's go. This expansion for Shogun 2 is, in my opinion, very well made. The only thing I don't quite like is a lot of the clans, as you can see as they go by in the top of the screen, they all have pretty much just a white background and a random symbol and a color, even though I know that that might have been the way it was, it just seems kind of bland from a gameplay perspective. So let's get 
We don't need the cannons just yet. Let's get the cadet school. Oh, they bomb that's what they bombarded. Let's see, what do I have? I got two gunboats and a corvette. I'm not gonna scupper that, that'd be a bad idea. I'm gonna get probably just a never No, can't afford that. Just gonna never Corvette just to buff up the fleet a bit. So I can take out the enemy that seems to be just seem to enjoy bombarding my troops. Hmm. Interesting. Attention, you slovenly samurai! Wow. As you wish, my lord. The veteran foreign veterans, rever. Interesting in his use of words. And we're gonna end this turn too. I'm in no rush to capture territories, because I, unlike in the um, Grand County of Stirling campaign, where I cannot attack my allies even if I, I can't break alliance to those at all, in this game I could just become neither for the Emperor nor for the Shogun if it gets too bad and just become the Emperor myself. But, which wouldn't be too bad, and it would make sense for an Imperial ambition. But the stated goal is just to help the Emperor reach and claim back his throne. For you. Um, let's take a look. Two more turns until that's done. Stronghold's pretty well damaged. That two ships can't be anything too threatening within that army. I'm just gonna cancel that. Because we outnumber him. We have a copper plated corvette which should do enough damage to whatever he has. And what he has, I assume, are just gunboats. Oh, we got a corvette and a gunboat. Yeah, not, nothing too threatening within this navy. Those poor birds aren't gonna outrun that wave, no matter how fast they go. And naval combat later on within this game is a lot more different than it was in Napoleon and Empires, and well, of course, um, Rome II and Attila, simply because you got these coal-powered ships, so they don't rely, like, they can't get tired anymore, unlike they could in the other games, or they're not dependent on the wind like they were in Empire and Napoleon. So it's going to be, like, as you can see, they got a massive turbines on this copper-plated corvette, and even... This little ship, I think, has a bit of propulsion by itself, without wind power. So it's just it's rather interesting the way tech, histor historically wise, and even in the game, is developed. You can kind of see the heat effects coming out of the smokestack, so that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the enemy fleet, who are hiding all the way over here. They got the regular sized gunboat, not too much of a threat, and they got the bigger corvette, which will be a threat simply because it looks like they're going to be holding position and forcing us to come to them. So my corvette is going to come at them, not quite from an angle, so just so we can glance most of the ammunition that they shoot at us off, and the two little cor Two little gunboats, I should say, are going to be coming and attacking from that side. Don't want to look at the compass. The compasses are scary. Actually, I can't even read that compass. Okay. <clears throat> Should probably speed it up so it's not just a bunch of smoke and water are the only things being moved. All this action, look at this fog action. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we can't see the firing range, but I assume it's going to be almost a 45 degree angle coming out the front of the ship going this way. 
for stuff they can hit. So we, if we avoid that and they don't move, then we'll be pretty much set. Is there gunboat? Are gunboats? Ah, I see what's going on. They see my flagship, and they're going to just be concentrated on that. That works well for us, actually. It means we can take out, or we can hit their um, corvette with some. Uh oh, nope. Okay, gonna slow down now. Oh, we're getting shot at. If that's the case, just try your best to um, get as close as possible. My gunboats. And you? Where's that? Yeah, I might as well just go for their gunboat. Try and take them out. But don't go back the way you came. Just try and get close. Let's take a look. Fast reload, not necessary. Overheat engine, definitely not necessary. And all we have is solid shot. So, just now that you're in range, just continue your. There we go. That's something. Hmm. As long as we keep this big ship distracted, we give us time for the. <clears throat> what is this called? Oh, it doesn't have its own name. We'll give time for the copper plated corvette to come out from behind. Now just turn and give him hell. Your general is under attack, sir. Well, looks like one of the gunboats is wavering. It's not good news, but it's not the worst news. They run. These guys are just distractions anyway, so it's not too important if they get killed. Oh yeah, we're getting some solid hits. Right, with a big. Oh, they're using fast reload. There you go. I'm not going to use fast reload on this gun boat. Probably going to save it for when I have to go against their Corvette. We have the same Corvette class, it's just mine has better armor. And. I'm going to say that this gun boat is pretty much going to route after one more volley. Yep, there you go. Or, well, oh, sink. Sync route, pretty much the same thing. Out of play. Now you're gonna have to go after them. You're on full speed. This gunboat is about to run. How much. I don't think it caused much damage to this Corvette, so that's. A ship is not the worst thing. It is withdrawing. That's alright. Ship of draws, ship of draws. Nothing I can do. I think they actually destroyed. Yeah, they destroyed that one. Or. Might as well destroy it, surrender. Now we just fast forward a little bit more until we get within range of this guy. Which is gonna be pretty soon. I have a feeling we're gonna win though, simply because we got the better protection over them. Whereas they are just wood, we have copper. And probably going to use fast reload on this guy. I don't wanna basically cross the T with them, which means that they get to open up all, all their guns before I can. But it might be might be necessary. Let's see. What happens? That's a really nice little screenshot opportunity right there. Ship on the horizon, fog all around. My ship coming up. We're almost within range, because as the same ship class, they're going to have the same range as us. So let's see what happens. Yep, there we go. Your general is under attack, sir. That was not a nice volley that we took. It's cool, we can repair in combat, but it um, disables firing for a bit, so probably shouldn't do that. Oh, wait, not that side. Let's keep an eye on it from this side. This is a pretty pr impressive range for simply just breech-loaded cannons, not like the tw turrets at all. 
and the hit accurately. It shows just how far technology has come along since days of yore. Uh oh. You get to stop and just continue on the straight line. Just keep moving whatever you do. I don't think they're taking that much damage. It doesn't even look like they took that many casualties. They take, they've killed more of us than we have of them. Hmm, lovely. Oh, they're wavering, we're shaking. This might go in our favor. If we can capture that ship, that would be good too. Another bigger ship to strengthen the fleet would be nice. Now, the only thing I don't want to happen is, is for our ship to break. We're so close now. Just open fire. Oh! That was scary. I thought that would have broken us for sure. There's nothing more I can really do at this point because I'm not that good at directing the broadsides. So I might as well just let it open fire whenever it can. Wow, this is... We're getting really close to each other. So we're, start, or we're scoring some good hits, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Fast reload. As long as we get more shots out into the air than they do, we'll be better off. Hmm. Well, you can say many things about naval combat in this game, but you do know that it is extremely different from the hand to hand combat of like ancient times. Um should probably just try and sink it or capture it. Don't want to get let the ship go away because we're gonna have to go invade their island anyway. It's gonna surrender. Maybe. I don't think so. Hmm. Well, sorry if it doesn't. We. Destroyed the fleet that came to bombard all my stuff. I'm happy with that. Hmm. I really like most of the quotes that they put in this game as compared to the older ones simply because. There's a lot of wisdom that you can learn from reading older military books like The Art of War and things like that, because human nature hasn't changed. It's only the technology we use to kill each other it has. So yeah, I'm going to leave this episode here. Um, leave a like, a comment, or even if you're feeling like generous, a subscription. And I shall see all of you in the next episode.